Good day. So in this uh, video, we will be discussing a brief introduction on metabolic engineering. So what is metabolic engineering? Metabolic engineering is concerned with the behavior and properties of reaction networks, including their structure, stoichiometry, kinetics, and control. So we use metabolic engineering to redesign metabolic pathways so that the performance of cell cultures is improved, or rather, we uh, the, the cells behave the way we want them to behave, they produce the products we want them to produce. So it emphasizes on the functioning of integrated metabolic networks rather than a single or few enzyme reactions. So what can we do or why do we need to bother with metabolic engineering? So using um, by tweaking the metabolic pathways, we can increase the yield and productivity of compounds synthesized by the cells. We can also synthesize new products not previously produced by a particular organism. And also, we can improve the viability or the resistance of your bacteria to more rigorous bioprocessing condition, conditions. For example, uh, tolerance to hypoxia, high temperature or even low temperature conditions, or even high amounts of byproducts. So it also um, you can improve the uptake and metabolism of substrate that is not previously assimilated. So this allows you to use um, new substrates or, for example, we usually use glucose, but um, in terms of economics, it's not it's not the cheapest substrate there is. But if we tweak the metabolism a bit of your bacteria, you can make them or allow them to use, uh, for example, agricultural uh, agricultural waste products or even um, spent molasses from some um, manufacturing plant. So you can do that. So enhance biological degradation. So you can also enhance biological degradation of pollutants if you are uh, involved in the uh, bioremediation practices. So uh, how do we do that or what's the basis? Why do we think we can do um, how or rather what's the principle in editing metabolic pathways? So take a look at this life cycle of the yeast. So the yeast we have your as you can see it's actually um, it's not a single life cycle. You actually have two the, the pathway, the this, this life cycle of the yeast diverges into two pathways. So you have your vegetative growth and then there is your um, formation of spores. So the, the yeast um, switches between the two, the two forms or the two um, cycles, the two life cycles they have, depending on the availability of the raw materials. So they can just do vegetative, uh, uh, vegetative growth so they just do simple, um, uh, rather you have your, uh, the simple cycle or they can do your sporulation cycle. So you have that. So what are the different mechanisms? So we have, uh, the yeast can switch between the two life cycle pathways by changing or switching up their uh, metabolic pathways. And organisms are inherently, have internal uh, metabolic switches that allows them to control their metabolic pathways. So, this allow them, these mechanisms allow them to avoid wasteful overproduction of metabolites and to utilize the material that is there. So, some of these path, uh, mechanisms are substrate induction, catabolite regulation, feedback regulation. Actually, feedback is one of the most uh, well-studied and more um, widely utilized by uh, microorganisms. You can also do amino acid regulation of RNA synthesis, energy charge regulation, or permeability controls. So let's first talk about substrate inductions. So when we say substrate induction, we have here the substrate is um, one of the uh, plays a role in the uh, control of the metabolic pathway. So we have, in substrate induction, we have two types of enzyme. Or rather, in this mechanism of control, we have two types of enzyme. We have the inducible enzyme and the constitutive enzymes. So inducible enzymes are enzymes that are not always present. So they are enzymes that are only produced when you have the substrate. So the, the microorganism doesn't create this enzyme. The, the genes for this enzyme are not expressed. They're expressed only when the substrate for the pathway they uh, 
they they are involved with are present. So they are induced basically by the substrate. Whereas the constitutive enzymes, these are enzymes that are always present in a pathway regardless of the substrate, the presence of their substrate. So those are uh, constitutive enzymes. So um, one model of that is the Jacob Monod model for negative control of the enzyme. So for example, your inducer, which is your substrate, let's say you have your, um, in this example, you have a stretch of DNA. By, by the way, the, the control, the inducible uh, enzymes are controlled, the production of inducible enzymes are controlled in the level of gene. So gene level control, that means the gene, you do not produce the enzyme per se because production of proteins, especially the large proteins like enzymes, are very energetically expensive. Okay, So um, if they are not used, they are not needed, the cells won't produce them. And how do the cells know that they need those enzymes is, of course, by substrate induction. So this is, this is one model for substrate induction. So here is a stretch of DNA. So this is your stretch of DNA. So in the stretch of DNA, you have your operator, or an operator region, the promoter region, and a repressor gene. And then this is the, uh, the gene that you want to produce, the inducible gene S. This is the repressor protein. This is a gene that codes for repressor protein. Now, the, the repressor protein gene is usually all, they are uh, usually constitutive. So, in the, press, in the absence of the inducer, this repressor binds to the operator. The operator is a region in the DNA that actually controls or inhibits the synthesis of the, sub, the gene or rather the, the transcription of that gene. Now, how does it do that? So remember, in, um, in gene expression, for a gene to be expressed, your polymerase, the RNA polymerase, must bind first to the promoter region, and then it will then move downstream towards the gene itself. However, if you have a repressor blocking the way, because remember, the operator, this one is between the promoter and the gene. So if you have a repressor blocking the way, you cannot the even if the RNA polymerase binds to the promoter, it cannot move. The gene is not expressed because there is a roadblock, a literal roadblock on the way. So that is um, the, the negative control model for Jacob Monod model. How about if there is the inducer? So in the presence of the substrate, so uh, you need now the, the gene because you have the substrate for that. The substrate is basically the uh, the inhibitor for the repressor. So th this is your inducer. Uh, it's, it's the substrate. So for example, if you have uh, lactose, so the lac uh, you want to express um, the lactose, the lac genes for uh, degradation of lactose. So your, your inducer is the substrate for that pathway, which is the lactose. It will bind to the repressor. So when it's bound to the repressor, it cannot now, it cannot, uh, it can bind to the operator region. Therefore, the RNA polymerase is free to synthesize your enzyme. And so your enzyme is produced to process the lactose. And this type of control can auto shut down. So for example, if all of the lactose are um, consumed, since the, the binding of the inducer to the repressor is reversible, so you have now a free repressor, and then you will go back to the inducer absent state. So it auto shuts down in the, in the absence of your enzyme. So that's the Jacob Monod model for negative control. How about positive control? So for positive controls, shown here is, uh, is uh, the ARA operon. Uh, just a background, what is an operon? An operon is, uh, is basically as a region in the DNA that contains genes. So remember, this, for this is found in bacterial. So for bacterial genes, they do not have introns. Their genes are produce uh, sequentially or rather they are present in sequential order for example gene D A B so these are the genes that are needed for the, the metabolic pathway now you have the promoter region and then there is a control gene away from the promoter region we usually present them as um, upstream of the promoter 
but not necessarily. Usually, it's upstream, but it's it should not be under the control of the promoter. Now, the control gene C is uh, on the controller. It's the one that controls, or it's it can be the repressor, it can be an activator. It, though it's the one that controls the operon. Now you have your um, ara operon. So in the this is when you say ara, it's arabinose. So this is uh, this one is involved with metabolism of arabinose. So the gene C produces the C protein, and the C protein binds to your arabinose. So your arabinose is the inducer here. So the 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 the, the thing here is for positive control in the presence of the inducer, you will turn on your um, gene the, the production of this gene so the the arabinose operon binds to your c protein and in this case unlike the the previous model where is the the controller gene is a repressor that stops the production this one is an inducer it's an activator of the uh this is the activator of the operon so when it binds the the c protein product of the control gene controller gene binds your arabinose it activates the, uh, the the transcription of the operon of the genes under the control of the operon so when they produce those genes you know, the, these genes are responsible for the pathways the metabolic pathway that um, that metabolizes your arabinose to the cellulose 5 phosphate so basically this one it enhances the uh, the production of those inducible enzymes so it's passive control so it activates the um, the gene or the operon itself. Okay, so the next one is uh, catabolite repression. So in catabolite repression, you have a catabolite. So when we say catabolite, it's uh, one of the um, intermediates byproducts of your uh, metabolic pathway. So this this catabolite can have uh, rep uh, can repress or can um, downregulate, can have a negative inhibits. It inhibits your pathway. So, for example, for that is the LAC operon. The LAC operon is actually a very curious type of, um, or rather, it's, it's, the, um, it's a model operon for a regulatory control of gene. Actually, I'll just post a, a separate video talking about the, the LAC operon per se to give you a brief um, idea on how to do that. But, um, to make the long story short, in catabolite re re uh, regulation, in here, for example, you have uh, a pathway, rather, your cell can um, can process both glucose and both lactose. So, however, since uh, glucose is easier to process, so there is a preference of, for glucose over lactose. So, that means that if both glucose and lactose is present as a substrate, your cell will first go or process glucose it uh, glucose it will choose glucose over lactose so how, did, how does it choose that so it has something to do with um with a catabolite called the cyclic amp cyclic amp is a, a very important signaling molecule in the cell it allows you to know the energetic um it's actually an energetic gauge of the cell so a, a high energy if it's rich in atp you have a low camp if it's low in atp low energy state of the cell it has a high CAMP value. Now, in the in the presence of CAMP in here, so you have your uh, CR protein. So you in this uh, this is the gene. So let's so you have your uh, gene ZY alpha. So this is the gene under the so this is the lack operon. So this this Z, ZY alpha are the genes under the control of the operon. This is the operator region where the Repressor and the inducer usually binds, and this is the promoter region. Okay. Now, if you have your uh, cyclic AMP, so in this case, this is the lac operon. So these genes are responsible for the production of lactose. So in the case, in low energy state, so you have high high uh, high cyclic AMP uh, production. So the cyclic AMP which is a byproduct of glucose, will bind to the CR protein, which uh, is actually uh, a protein that can induce 
the production of the lac genes. These are the lac genes. So it, it activates the promoter. The CR proton activates the promoter if you have high levels of psychic AMP. So the, the end result is that you will produce the lac genes because uh, your your cells, the, the, the cell, the signals in the cell are telling it uh, there's not enough energy, you want additional source of energy. So we will just do lactose. Now in the absence of uh, or rather, in the presence of glucose, so you have a different energy source. So your cyclic AMP is actually low. So the levels of cyclic AMP is low, so it cannot bind to the CR protein. So since it, uh, it doesn't bind to the CR protein, this uh, this gene or this operon is in uh, not necessarily inhibited, but rather it's not activated. So they, there is no preference. You can there's still low level production of the lac genes because it's not fully shut down however it's not it's not it's it is also not turned on so you have you have very low levels of production of the lac gene so the the cell since there is no inducer of the cyclic AMP is uh, the level of cycling AMP is low, there is no need basically to produce the lac genes. So the cells do not really produce them. So the, the thing here is the cell switches to glucose metabolism. So that is uh, for catabolite repression. So we will be talking about feedback regulation in, a in the next video of this series.